tonight I will be talking about a few pests of honeybees. It will be mostly about uh, small life beetle and wax moth. So they're very nasty uh, as they can, for the small life beetle, they can destroy a hive fairly quickly, I would say. And wax moth uh, can join the, the party and uh, finish the hive. So uh, I made a list of a uh, few honeybees pests, and uh, there's many, of course, and uh, they are attracted to either uh, bees, larvae, honey, pollen, wax, anything that bees produce. And uh, well, the list is, uh, is quite long, but uh, you've got uh, the first, uh, the worst one is the Vara destructor. Then uh, in France, we've got pre predatory ornate, which are very nasty and can destroy an hive very quickly. Uh, wasp, sometimes birds also, small hive beetle, the Atenia tumida, wax moth, toads, ants fly, dragonfly, mites, mammals, well, a lot. In Australia and New South Wales, we've got the small life beetle, unfortunately, we've got wax moths, greater and lesser. We'll talk, uh, we'll talk about them a bit later. Unfortunately, we also have uh, European wasps, which are uh, Vespula uh, germanica. They come, they come from Europe. And uh, we've got Brola fly. The Brola fly is only in Tazi. But uh, we have to, it's a reportable pest, so we have to check if we got it. Uh, there is the rainbow beater as well, and, and of course, livestock, and unfortunately, cane toad. And apparently, uh, we, are, uh, we need to monitor cane toad because they are in New South Wales, apparently. So let's talk about uh, the number one cul culprit, uh, small life beetle. Uh, While well, they originated from uh, South Africa, uh, they spread, in, they appeared in uh, America, in Florida in 1998. And they, they, they were very prolific, very, very, they spread over America over two years only. Uh, in Australia, they were first described in 2002 in Richmond, and we believe that they've been there before. They probably arrived uh, with the um, uh, army facilities in Richmond, and uh, maybe some people said that uh, they could have come uh, with the uh, Olympics could be because uh, Richmond was the one one and three port for uh, horses and they could have come with horse poo or, or something. Anyway, they, they are here, unfortunately. And uh, they, so you've got uh, the small eye beetle, that's a nice close up I found on the, on the website. They tiny, but uh, they're very nasty. So uh, why make them nasty? It's because the bees, they can't really remove them. They are uh, flat. They very, uh, they've got uh, um, two uh, wing protection that are very uh, uh, rigid and the bees can't really bite them. If they can, they can bite legs, but most of the time they can't. I've seen bees chase, chasing them, but never, I've never seen bees killing uh, actually a small life beetle. So small life beetle, uh, the adults are nasty, but that's the larvae that will do the most damage. And basically they will eat the bees eggs, they will eat brood, pollen and honey. And they will uh, make their way through the comb 
uh, brood comb and honeycomb as well. And the excrement contain a special yeast that will make the honey ferment. Uh, therefore, the honey is not uh, will uh, froth and could leak at the entry of the hive. And when it's doing that, when it's uh, like that, it's probably too much to uh, too too late to save the colony. But we talk about what we can do later. If it's too heavy, the bee can abscond. They can leave the colony. And uh, well, just a reminder that uh, small hive beetles will be attracted by uh, old frame, sticky frame, which contain honey. And uh, if you store frame, they can come and uh, eat the frame. Well, they can fly up to seven kilometers and they're active, they're most active at dusk. Uh, this is where they invade colony. So Andy, you've got a question. Yeah, um, so Olivier, thank you very much. It, I, I was just interested to know in, in relation to storing stickies or frames that have been used, um, can you just, will you come on to how best to store them to avoid them being attacked by pests? Yes, I will. I will talk about that a bit later. I was planning to to do Thank that, you. but I can. Uh, I can uh, right now. That, that's okay. No worries. Uh, basically, uh, you have if you want to protect them from small hive beetle and uh, wax moss, the best way is to froze them. Freeze them. Sorry, you freeze them for twenty four to forty eight hours then it will kill any eggs, any uh, stage of larvae, anything. Then you can store them in a well-ventilated place, uh, preferably uh, where, it's, uh, where, where there is a lot of flight, because small live beetle doesn't like uh, uh, ventilated areas and uh, direct sunlight. But if you want to store uh, um, comb with honey inside, uh, I think the best way to do it is to freeze them, keep them in a freezer, and they can keep black forever. Okay, but I will talk a bit uh, more of this a bit later. And uh, well, once the small hive beetle enter a colony, they will seek uh, some cracks, corners, anything that where they can hide and escape the bees. The bees, they will tend to chase them to those corner and they will make some present with, present <clears throat> with propolis, like a little jail uh, where the small hive beetle are. You can, you can see them when you open your beehive, you, you can see it's like a, a U shape and the, the bees, they, they push them in those, in those little cells. Uh, female lay uh, eggs in clusters. You've got here a uh, small hive beetle eggs. They don't produce as much eggs as the wax moss, but that's enough to invade the colony. The eggs are very similar to uh, bees' eggs, except that they're a bit smaller and they're not removed by workers. So they leave them in place. So we can we could have thought that uh, bees could harvest and kill the eggs, but they don't, unfortunately. Uh, those eggs they're very very vulnerable to desiccation. Therefore, uh, a small hive beetle thrive when it's hot and humid. Uh, they will do that. They will add, lay the egg in the brood chamber and. Uh, uh, female will lay eggs when disturbed. So when we open a beehive, and especially when we squash some uh, small hive beetle, that will trigger a pheromone and they will uh, lay eggs everywhere they can. So uh, they can develop, yeah, with the right temperature, they can develop very quickly, unfortunately. So the larvae, the larvae is, uh, well, 
very distinguishable uh, to compare to small like uh, small uh, to wax moth sorry so wax moth larvae because uh, the larvae got spikes on the on his butt mm. on his back and the head is completely different also plus uh, the small like beetle larvae uh, has got three pair of legs as for the wax moth larvae which has three pair of legs, but it's because it's like a moss, um, a caterpillar. It's got it. It has got also pro legs, which are not legs, but uh, they used to crawl as well. And also, small like beetles got spike on the bottom. They've got a very tough skin, so. Uh, Compared to wax moths, wax moths you can when you squash them, it's easy to squash. Small like beetle, they not as uh, the larvae are not so easy to squash. They very they've got very uh, tough skin, very thick skin, and you can recognize them uh, like that. But the spikes are very distinguishable. And uh, well, they can measure up to a centimeter. And when they die, when you freeze them, they look like a uh, very uh, thin uh, rice, uh, you know, rice grain, like white rice grain. So yeah, they compare, they similar to that. So when they are uh, ready to pupate, the larvae will crawl at the baseboard and uh, they will hide in a corner and they will crawl outside at night and they will dig their way inside the soil in front of the the hive in a 50 centimeter radius and they can dig up to 10 centimeters then they will emerge two to 15 weeks later and it will depend on the weather of course, because uh, they will be inactive when the weather, when the temperature is lower than 10 degrees. But above that, they will be very active and they will uh, make, I've, in those pictures, I've got a uh, uh, pupae and, uh, and the larvae, which is starting to become an adult. We can see the feature of an ad adult. Chicken. And will chase larvae, especially uh, chicken. They're very good of uh, digging uh, in front of the beehive, and they will uh, hunt for uh, larvae inside the, the soil, or even larvae uh, that are crawling uh, on the on the ground. They will also eat the the pupae in the ground. But if you want to have chicken, it's the best way is to elevate your hive because if you've got the the chicken at the same height at the landing board uh, they will be in the way of bees and i've seen uh, bees attacking chicken and killing chicken so yeah you have to be aware of that so it's better to to elevate the hive so the the chicken won't pick the bees on the on the baseboard and trigger a reaction. How can we manage small hive beetle? Because it's almost impossible to get rid of them, so we have to manage those this pest. Well, the first thing is keeping a good population, good density of bees inside the hive. Strong hive is the key. With a strong hive, the bees, they are patrolling everywhere and they will imprison the small hive beetle. And if you've got a strong hive, you almost barely see uh, any small hive beetle, adults. If you see more, a lot of uh, small hive beetle, it's better reducing the size. So you've got uh, not enough density, bee density, so you can remove a super and make, uh, make the hive stronger. Also, when it's hot and uh, humid, don't open the hive too, uh, too often because it will uh, break the child. 
trigger egg laying. And if the temperature is good, of course, small live beetle will breed and uh, there will be an infestation afterwards. You have to keep the beetle population to a minimum if you can, because small live beetle attracts small live beetle. They will, uh, the, the, they've got pheromones, so they can attract other small live beetles. You can use different kinds of trap. So there is a trap, uh, one is working well, it's a silver bullet, it's re reusable. You put uh, either oil, lime, or uh, that diatomous earth in it. Uh, you can bait them and uh, put some uh, uh, like uh, um, uh, what's the name of that the, the thing you you use in the in the kitchen uh, it's like a cloth so you put that inside that and you put a bait and the small life beetle will uh, will be inside the box or you can use an insecticide happy so is an insecticide so the beetle will get inside this box and will uh, die but uh, when you're using that, you only you only will be will contain a bit of this insecticide. So yeah, just be aware of that. Yes, we've got a question there. Um, just there's also sticky traps um, that look yes, like that yeah. one. They look similar to the bait trap, but it's just yes, a bit yeah. of sticky paper. Yeah, you're right. You can put like a sticky paper inside, and the the small eye beetle will be. Uh, stuck it's like uh, glue and yes yeah it works well also mesh board are working well uh, apparently uh, the blue bees ventilated baseboard are very good because the, the bees will push the small eye beetle inside the cracks and because it's round they can't get back inside the hive so it will be also ventilated and uh, ventilated and free of pest and debris as well. I think Gavin's microphone needs to move. Oh, yeah. chucks. Chucks was the word I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking for uh, who's got the microphone on. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. Uh, one good thing is to protect the front of the hive. If you've got pavement, concrete, or uh, you can treat the soil, you can soak the soil with water, fully soak the soil, and it will kill the larvae. But uh, ants also, uh, I've got ants uh, nearby my hive, and they take care of the any larvae that's crawling out of the hive. So I don't have infestation as such because you can't reinfect them with the, the beetle that are um, emerging from the, the ground just in front of your hive. So I've talked about chicken, but uh, yeah, they're good also to manage the, that. So what to do if you've got infestation? So infestation, meaning sliming, a lot of small life beetle, baseball would be uh, full of debris and uh, crawling beet, the small uh, beetle larvae, any stage. And of course, if, you, if the colony is still alive, because most of the time uh, they will uh, uh, get to a point, it will get to a point uh, that the colony uh, will collapse completely or the, there's not enough uh, bees and they, they can keep the, the brood, the temperature is not good enough and maybe the queen will die. And, but most of the time you've got infestation when you've got a weak hive. So there's uh, always something that triggers a uh, small hive beetle uh, infestation. So what to do? First, you put a tarp in front of the hive 
So it will prevent any spill, any small eye beetle crawling out and burrowing uh, inside the, in the ground, in the soil. Plus uh, the spill will attract other small eye beetle as well. Fermented honey will attract small eye beetle like crazy. They attracted by that. So you, oh, sorry. So you, if the colony is small enough, you can move them to a nook. If not, but you can still move them to a nook for, for the time uh, where you uh, clean the hive. You remove all honey frame. Most of the time they will all contaminated. You put them in gar garbage bags and you freeze them later and you dispose them. Uh, you can probably uh, clean them, but uh, it's not a good idea because they will be uh, contaminated by a small eye beetle uh, um, uh, pools and also uh, yeast from the, the, the excrement and it's not great. And if you want to, if you plan to reuse that, you need to wash them thoroughly and uh, remove the wax. And it's not, you it's no point of doing that. Yeah, you can irradiate, but don't, uh, the, you don't irradiate uh, frosting honey. Otherwise, they won't be happy at all at the facility because it will, if you've got a tiny hole inside the, the bag, that's bad. It's very bad because it will leak. The temper it um, um, elevate a bit uh, the temperature, the irradiation. But yeah, basically it's not worth the money of uh, of uh, irradiate a few frames. Just dispose them. Uh, you do not extract honey as well because it contains the yeast and it's half harmful for human this one. You clean the bottom board with, uh, you remove all the debris and stuff. You clean it with hot water and dish soap with a brush. You let it dry and you freeze uh, if you can. If you uh, have a big freezer, you can freeze the bottom box, you can freeze the, the baseboard as well, and it will kill any eggs, any larvae, any stage and also as uh, wax moss larvae. Uh, once everything's clean, you put back the colony inside the hive and you put new frames. And uh, if there will be some adult, uh, small eye beetle adult that are coming back, you put traps, you trap them and you feed the bees because you remove uh, the honey and you want a strong colony. So you feed the bees, you feed them with a light sugar and uh, it will stimulate uh, the queen and uh, she will lay a lot of eggs and it will build up the, the population. And if you can, you requeen uh, re as soon as possible because what triggers the, the infestation is a weak hive, a weak hive is most of the time due to a weak queen. So ditch that queen, remove that queen, weak queen with a, a good one, and you will solve your problem. And also, of course, you monitor the hive. And yeah, act before it's too late. And if it's out of control, you are in trouble. So I put also um, a link to, uh, can't remember exactly, um, to a website. Yeah, uh, yeah, be aware, the be aware website. They've got uh, sheets, um, fact sheets of uh, for small eye beetle. It's very good. Wax moss. There's two types of wax moss, the greater wax moss, which is the most dangerous uh, that will do the, the greater damage and lesser wax moss, which is smaller. It's very, it's uh, silvery. It's like the, 
you know the kitchen light you can have in kitchen when they when similar to them so it's the same family basically it's a pyralidae family so the pyral uh, the uh, corn uh, moss is the same family as this one uh, well they can do a lot of damage both of them, they will uh, make their way inside beehive. They're not attacked by bees, so the adult will uh, fly at night and get inside the beehive. And most of the time, they will uh, do that where, when the colony is weak. So, yeah, keep a strong hive. Uh, the wax moths, uh, they after the protein most of the time, so they will target uh, uh, like silky, the, the brood wax, which contain the, the bee cocoon inside, it's uh, the silk, the silk is a protein. They will target uh, pollen and even bee larvae. Uh, they will develop in weak and low density colony, and they will take any advantage. If there is small eye beetle, a lot of small eye beetle, they will come and uh, have a bite in the party. And if there is, uh, they can be uh, the both greater and lesser wax moths inside the hive, but most of the time, the greater wax moths moths will take over because they're competing for the same food and uh, the greater wax moths it's most it's better doing that so uh, at the back at the corner you've got uh, pictures of uh, greater and, uh, and lesser wax moths so basically they're not the same size and the uh, greater wax moths is like a uh, very fluffy it's like feather and they've got this tiny big pointy head it's like a they look like a, a frog mouse <laughs> or a bird i don't know they, they've got uh, like this pointy beak it's very easy to spot how to prevent wax moss infestation same question same answer keep strong hive that's the, the way to keep all those pests out of your beehive. They will take any opportunity. And when they are established themselves, if there is empty uh, frame, they will take over and they will take over the next one and the next one or the next one. And basically there is less and less space for bees and bees will abscond because they ate the silky uh, thing. It's like a, a spider web, and bees they 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 not uh, they will be uh, deterred by that. Plus, they will de be deterred by the the excrement of the small uh, of the sorry of the wax moss, and the larvae uh, the larvae they can eat through wood. The pupae will eat through wood, so it will also destroy your frame and it will it can dig inside the frame the wooden part of the frame as well so uh the female will lay 600 eggs up to 600 eggs if the temperature temperature is good enough and they will be very quick to hatch five to five three to five days but a low temperature, when the temperature is uh, lower than 18 degrees, will slow the process a lot. For instance, it takes 35 days to hatch, for the eggs to hatch at uh, 18 degrees temperature. And when it's lesser than that, it takes even more, so months. But freezing frame is the best. It will kill any stage of uh, wax moss is a, a lesser and greater wax moss. If you stock some uh, dark, like old comb frame, most of the time, if you stock them in a dark place, wax moss will come, either lesser or greater, 
and they will took over and it will destroy and making this thing, this mess. And there's not much to do. There's not much to, um, yeah, basically you can remove that and try to, to melt the rest of the works, but it's very, very messy. And uh, yeah, freezing them is the best way. Uh, they can eat through wood, like I said, but they can eat through plastic as well. Uh, if you have wax inside plastic bags, make sure they're very thick plastic bags. Uh, it's better to put them to put the wax in a box, in a thick plastic box, because uh, um, very like a film of plastic, they, it will be eaten by a wax moss. So they very they can eat anything. That's, Apparently, I've seen that in France, they use um, uh, walnut leaves to, uh, they put the walnut leaves uh, on top of the frames or between frames. And uh, there is a, a molecules uh, made uh, by the walnut, uh, which, which is called juglon, and it will deter uh, wax moss. Um, I will try to find some uh, leaves and try this here. And of course, don't wait too long before it's too late. Otherwise, it will destroy the colony. European wasp, well, they're quite aggressive. They can uh, attack bees, but they're not. They're not uh, too. Uh, they're not a threat here unless you've got a very strong colony of uh, European wasp and a weak hive. Therefore, they will attack bees. So what they do, they, uh, they wait for the, the forager to come back when they heavy and fat with, uh, with a lot of um, uh, nectar in the gut and they will uh, kill them and they will cut them in half with the mandibles, mandibles, and they will bring back only the abdomen of the of the bee inside the nest. So most of the time, well, you can be called. I've been called uh, several times by people saying, "Oh, I've got a, I've got a bee nest uh, in my garden, and they're attacking me." and uh, yeah, uh, can you do something?" And uh, I'm always asking pictures. And uh, when I see, and when they say, well, it's in the ground. Okay, I know that we're talking, we're not talking about bees, we're talking about uh, wasp because bees, they don't nest in the ground. I mean, European honeybees, they don't nest in the ground and they don't, if it's native bees, they don't attack people also as uh, the wasp will do those two wasps, they, they just guardians. And when you approach the, the nest, they will attack you and they, they will sting you several times. So just be careful. So basically, if I see uh, those wasps, I said, call the pest control and they will take care of them. Broda fly can be mistaken uh, mistaken for um, uh, vara mite, but it's not a mite. Uh, it's, a, it's a fly, wingless fly, basically. And it's like a lice of bees. Uh, it's not very, uh, it's not harmful to a colony, but uh, it's a reportable pest. And if we see them and we can, it can be imported, it's in Tassie, and it can be imported to mainland Australia. And we can, uh, we won't notice it until we do a sugar shake, and sugar shake, uh, maybe we can dislodge those things from bees and can be mistaken for, from uh, um, Vara mite. What they do, the larvae will do some scribbly thing they will dig uh, inside the honey and wax but they don't seem to arm the colony and uh, they're just digging uh, under the capping so when you harvesting honey or when you're removing the capping 
that we lower uh, dramatically the population. And that's it for tonight. Regarding the small hive beetles, um, you mentioned not opening your hive too often. What do you consider as opening too often? Uh, at the moment, uh, you don't need to do uh, to inspect basically because you will do a sugar shake a bit later. It's uh, in April, if I remember well. So um, what you at the moment you open your hive mostly for harvesting. But if you notice something wrong, if you see a lot of uh, beetle when you're harvesting, just have a look because uh, can be uh, infestation. But you will see if you've got uh, if you've got smaller beetle because the baseboard will be uh, there will be a lot of debris on the baseboard, and the bees will try to uh, remove those uh, debris. Wax like uh, when I say debris it's a piece of, of wax because the, the beetle they will dig through that and they will open the capping and uh, there's all small debris so if you see that that's not a good sign so it's best to to have a, a look and uh, an act basically yeah but too often is uh once uh, once a fortnight, I'd say, or even once a month at the moment. I haven't opened my, I haven't done a brood check of my eye for two months. So yeah, they're doing well. But uh, if you see the, you can tell, you can tell if eye is strong just by watching the, the landing board. If you see a lot of bees, they don't worry there won't be any small live beetle if you see a lot of bees at night on the landing board that's perfect that means the the population is uh, is big enough to take care of any small live beetle or wax moss that will enter the colony yeah wax moss uh how many is too much uh it depends uh if you've got wax moss on top of your of your frame, you can have like a five, ten wax moss. That's okay. But uh, when they are uh, trying to get inside uh, the frames, that's where you get in trouble. So it's better to uh, remove those frames. You freeze them. You remove if there is any debris. You remove the debris. You the 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 silky thing and the. Uh, if the frame is too, it's broken, or if there is holes, you can melt melt it and put a new one. But otherwise, uh, yeah, freeze them. That's the best way to get to, to get rid of them, and you can put it back afterwards. 